Time to play with some clay. I just checked the length of uh, the fringe on the front and compared it to what I just did and I found I was a little short. So I'm going to increase the length to match the front. Now I measured the length between here and there on the uh, fringed area of the dress and I found that uh, I'm right on the button as far as uh, the same size with the front fringe so neither side is going to be longer than the other as far as fringe goes okay I think I might Cut in a little bit as much as I can because the wind would be blowing the fringe a little bit too. Okay, I'm going to run my flattened monster clay through the pasta spaghetti making part of the uh, pasta machine to give me the fringe. To clean the spaghetti part of the uh, pasta machine, I run a posted note up until it gets to just about the sticky part through the uh, pasta machine just to clean the uh, rollers so I'm not getting a bunch of leftover stuff from the uh, last batch of fringe that I just made. I just came up with that idea. It works out perfect. <clears throat> well, sometime later, I finally got the, all the fringe on the bottom of the dress done on this side. Now, I'll start working on a pattern that will go across here, and I've got to work that out, and uh, I'll do that tomorrow, not today, because I want to get started on the upper part here and get the, some of the uh, fringe up there done, but uh, for now, at least this part of the uh, bottom part is done. Um, I just got to figure out how to make the pattern look the same on this side as it does on this side. And that ain't going to be easy. And I got some fringe to put down on the, this side of the, uh, dress. It's going to go down the, uh, seam of the dress on both sides but before I do that I got to get the pattern um, laid out and uh, the textures the way I want them all right continuing all on. right there's short fringe on the bottom of the sleeve the long fringe is on the uh, opening of the sleeve where the arm goes through so I'm in making an incision or a lower area of the sleeve for me to put the uh, fringe in there. I got to have the fringe backed. I can't have it hanging loose because it'll cost a fortune to cast it. So this is the way I do it. It's not very long. 
Well, actually, it is pretty long. So I'm going to just increase it a little bit. Once again, I'm using monster clay because it holds its shape better. If I was to do this in regular plastiline clay, I would be running in some problems. Because every time I pressed on the the regular clay, the plastiline clay, it would uh, deform. I'm thinking I'm going to do the same. I don't know if I want to do that, though. But I think I will. I'm going to do the same kind of fringe on the uh, bottom of her bodice. But I'll do that tomorrow. I'm running out of time right now. This is taking me a long time to get this going here. That bottom part was a hard one to do. But I'm happy the way this turned out today. And uh, can't wait to get down here and work on this tomorrow. Now, the reason I'm not too infringe on the... Uh, the other side of the sleeve is because that's going to be covered with long fringe anyway, so there's no need to waste my time doing that. Okay. Now, I, need, I just need to work out some of the... Uh, I'm trying to think and talk at the same time. I can't do that. I'm going to... Okay. I'm going to put some breaks in between the fringe to make it look like it's not pasted on. <laughs> Which it is. That looks good. It just makes it look less machined. Because I'm going to paint the clay, I mean the uh, monster 
clay to look like uh, regular clay. And uh, for those of you who've never seen me do this before, I use a uh, paintbrush to uh, put on some paint that I had colored to match the color of the uh, clay that I'm working with. So that when I'm using something like wax or in this case, monster clay, it won't be distracting to people who are seeing the clay and just trying to decide whether to purchase a copy of this piece in bronze. They're not all saying, what's that? What's that color? Why is that color different? Just takes away a question. You don't want to have a lot of questions in a client's mind when they're buying. It doesn't matter whether you paint it or not, it's all going to come out the same. It just eliminates that uh, question. It's uh, what I did was for those who've never seen this before. What I did was I took a sample of the clay that I use to a paint shop. Here, actually, it was in uh, True Value here locally, and uh, their the paint department. And what they did was they put uh, the paint or the uh, sample of the clay into their color machine that matches the color and uh, they match the color of my clay all right i've got the uh all the uh monster clay painted and you can see it it blends in now with the uh the rest of the clay is not distracting and uh, it actually looks really good now i'm happy with it especially with this uh up here it, it just really looks amazing that's why i'm going to redo the fringe that i have on the bottom here to match the uh, fringe i have on the uh, side all right that's it for today i'll see you guys tomorrow give me a like and a subscribe and ring the little bell also don't forget i have instructional videos available now online the link below this video shows you a link to a review of all nine videos later everybody good night